the comedy science fiction novel and movie, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, contains a plethora of hidden in plain sight regarding our situation. While the story does take place in space using the false conventional globe model, this is nothing to write off. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy allegorizes the fall of man in a very unique way. The protagonist's name is Arthur. After the Earth is destroyed by the alien race, the Vogons, Arthur and his friend hitch a ride on their spaceship. A creature called the Babelfish is put in Arthur's ear in order to translate the language of the Vogons. The Babelfish translates the Vogon aliens, who are as unintuitive and bureaucratic as it gets. The Vogons can't think for themselves. They are a hive mind with no independent thought. What does this remind you of? This is referring to the lifeless, binary consciousness of the energy extraction matrix, which is rigid and based in dogma and groupthink. This fish is referring to both the Tower of Babel and the Age of Pisces. Babel, Babel, it's the same thing. The Tower of Babel, as we described in my video, The Purgatorial Dumping Ground, is the same structure as Dante's Purgatory. This is where we've been. In the Bible story, the creation of many different languages from one single universal language is a punishment. This is first introduced as sin in the Garden of Eden. The Tower of Babel story is referencing the fragmentation of consciousness going from unity to separation. The Babel fish or Babel fish is a fish because we've been in the age of Pisces, the age of duality which has translated to us the perils of the binary consciousness duality offers, dramatized by the Vogon alien race. Through fragmentation, Pisces translates the unconscious and makes it conscious by manifesting a binary control system all around us to teach us the perils of this separation. This is why it's said that it feeds on brainwave energy, absorbing unconscious frequencies and excreting a matrix of conscious frequencies. The Babelfish absorbs unconscious frequencies and excretes a matrix of conscious frequencies to the speech centers of the brain. The Age of Pisces ushers us into the Age of Aquarius through playing out the scenarios that aren't consciously controlled by the living souls through a purging process reflecting the dark, the hidden parts of ourselves on the magnetic grid to get rid of these expressions through their observation. When the book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, is revealed, it has a golden image of Saturn on the cover. Saturn, as we've talked about many times, is the lord of karma, discipline, and time. This construct has been held together and ruled by Saturn. As we have said many times, Saturn, Father Time, and the Grim Reaper are the same figure. We've been immersed in time as a collective purging process, and time ultimately leads to death. The cycle of birth and death, bound by a linear mechanism of time, is not an eternal system. It's only here when we require things to kill within our consciousness. Hence, we've died over and over again until reaching where we are now, on the brink of transformation. The Lord of the Rings series allegorizes the situation here. The rings refer to the rings of Saturn, which bind Middle-earth in an energy extraction system. The battle between good and evil is dramatized. And at the end of the trilogy, in Return of the King, Aragorn is crowned King of Gondor. This symbolizes the return of the living, as the heroes of the movie are seen in a celebration on top of what looks exactly like Dante's Purgatory. This is the earthly paradise, or Garden of Eden, 
which is at the center of our realm, which is really the center of you. This is revealing our final destination after purging the destructive nature of duality. The collective zero point is unlocked after metaphorically climbing the many levels of purgatory until breaking free from time itself. There is nothing to panic about. There is nothing to fear. This is why the guide contains the words, don't panic, on its back cover. This phrase in Gematria has the same value as the heart and black star. Home is where the heart is, the emerald heart, and this is the center of it all. David Bowie's Black Star contains the lyrics, in the Villa of Ormond stands a solitary candle in the center of it all. The video depicts the black sun, the other half of the white sun above our heads. This is Amun, the vehicle of our sub and unconscious, which is fusing right now with the conscious mind. This condition of splitting ourselves in two, in the illusory contrast of good versus evil, is represented by the president of the galaxy, Zephod Beeblebrox. He has two faces causing a bipolar condition. When asked about this condition, he claims that in order to become the president, he needed to split his brain in two. To further explain, he plays a video showing what led to this split condition. In the video, it's revealed. Deep Thought is a computer that was created by a pan-dimensional, hyper-intelligent species of beings to come up with the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. Deep Thought is shaped like a golden cube. Interestingly, New Jerusalem, the abode of the 144,000 living souls in the Bible's book of Revelation, is described as a giant golden cube. Deep Thought proclaims the answer to life, the universe, and everything is 42. The answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is 42. Hmm. In ASC2 language, the most basic computer software, 42 is the designation for an asterisk. The asterisk in computer language is used as a wild card for everything, anything. 42 means whatever you want the answer to be, essentially. The original asterisk is a black star. Again, we refer to David Bowie's song, Black Star. It's all about the center of it all. This number, 42, is not a satisfactory answer to the beings. Only when you know the question will you know what the answer means. Give us the ultimate question then. I can't, but there is one who can. A computer that will calculate the ultimate question. A computer of such infinite complexity that life itself will form part of its operational matrix. And you yourselves shall take on new, more primitive forms and go down into the computer to navigate its 10 million year program. I shall design this computer for you and it shall be called... Let's say that again. A computer that will calculate the ultimate question. A computer of such infinite complexity that life itself will form part of its operational matrix. And you yourselves shall take on new, more primitive forms and go down into the computer to navigate its 10 million year program. We, the living souls, in our true forms are eternal, hyper-intelligent, and multidimensional, as the movie states. We projected our consciousness into the Toroto Wheel of Time in these third dimensional forms. This movie is telling the full truth. In order to expand, we had to enter a simulated experience of consciousness which is tied to a set program in order to return to the original state with more wisdom. 
Haven't we been asking questions within Maya? Why are we here? Who am I? Why is the world the way it is? These questions have generated the divine realizations we are having now. Our collective ascension is due to this program almost being over. Deep thought is a golden cube, like New Jerusalem, because we descended into cubed consciousness in order to turn lead into gold, an alchemy expression for transmutation, taking what's dark and light and morphing it into singularity. The phrase deep thought has the same gematria value as the phrases Akashic Records, Christ Reborn, Ascension Day, and the Book of Life. Our Christ consciousness gets reborn through cycling in and out of quantum possibilities that this supercomputer we've called Earth allows us to experiment with. Therefore, the Akashic Records get stored with the perils and pleasures of such a reality, leading to our inevitable Ascension Day, being written in the Book of Life. This is Christ consciousness being reborn, the true second coming. The computer claiming the Earth program will last 10 million years is not insignificant. The number 10 million has seven zeros. The one has been split into the seven. This is what this truly means. The infinite light of creation split itself into the prism, the sever of the seven. This is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, as we spoke about in my video, The Crystalline Core. This is heart essence funneled into the seven chakras. The one true energy, the heart space, has been on a mission to cancel out the above and below of the seven. The number 42, the first initial answer from deep thought, isn't insignificant. From this number, we can derive 144 and 1221. 21 times 2 is 42. Mirrored, we have 2112, the pi numerology value for North Pole. Mirror that again, and the day of the overlay's dissolution is revealed, 1221. This is happening this year. In English gematria, the phrase return to Eden, 2019, equals 2112. And once again, because we are going through the magic mirror, flip it around and we get 1221. In a 3 times 3 times 3 magic cube, each column, row, and pillar adds up to 42. 1221 2019 can be added up to give us a value of 333. We recently talked about how this flat disc we're on is akin to a record being played until hitting the center. We spin round and round on the wheel of samsara until the disc is over once the stylus hits the center. The LP is a vinyl record format characterized by a speed of 33 and a third RPM, which we can characterize as 33.3 RPM. There are no coincidences. There are 42 principles of Ma'at, the ancient Egyptian personification of truth. In Egyptian mythology, there are 42 questions asked of persons making their journey through the Duat after death. The Duat is the Egyptian equivalent of the Catholic purgatory. The 42 principles equate to having a heart as light as a feather, because at the end of this timeline, our hearts shall be fully unlocked. So the number 42 corresponds with making it through a purging process. After the Duat, we achieve Aru, which is the Egyptian paradise, the field of reeds. 42 isn't such a bad answer after all. 4 corresponds to the letter D, and 2 to the letter B. DB is an abbreviation for database. A database is a structured set of data held within a computer. The computer of consciousness we've called Earth has been but a series of structured data designed to instill us with wisdom. In my video, Like a Record Baby, The Purgatorial Disc, we talked about how the living souls are going through a birthing process. 
The womb of the matrix cultivates us until the program returns us back home to the heart. And until then, we are on a cord, like an umbilical cord, being fed the information to form into an ever-expanded collective. This is spirit birth. In Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, trials and tribulations ensue, and at the end of the movie, Arthur and his love interest are united. This is the masculine and feminine coming together, and the Vogons, who have been following them the entire time, are defeated. We are cancelling out all the binary aspects of ourselves. The protagonist's name is Arthur, because Arthur was the head of the Knights of the Round Table, who searched for the Holy Grail in British lore. As depicted in medieval artwork, the Knights of the Round Table surround the Holy Grail at the center, just like we cultivate the heart space through being on the record. The book and movie, A Wrinkle in Time, uses imagery of the cube as well. The Tesseract, which is a hypercube, is used to move in and out of dimensions. In order to tesser, one needs love. This frequency is what guides the movement between timelines. There is a realm traveled to called Kamazots, a place where all the inhabitants behave in a mechanistic way and seem to be under the control of a single mind. This is just like the Vogons and also like the soulless consciousness all around us. Soulless beings, or non-player characters, are the manifested aspects of the living soul's inverted nature projected into this dualistic holding space for the sake of reflecting to us what happens when we split ourselves away into the polarities of good and evil. The Kamazot's hive mind is controlled by a parasitic disembodied brain called it. This is a reference to the id. In Jungian psychology, the id is the most primal and instinctive part of the mind, and is the basis of primitive emotions like fear and anxiety. We instantly think of Pennywise the Clown in Stephen King's It, who represents all of the fearful parts of ourselves that we have been transmuting in this ascensional process. The climax of A Wrinkle in Time in the grips of the It, the protagonist Meg transmutes her shadow by confronting her doppelganger, representing everything that has remained hidden and locked away in the sub and unconscious. We have been in the cube, and we shift it around through harnessing love energy, which is everything void of fear. Intuition, creativity, ease, empathy, determination, resilience, all that good stuff that leads to expansion. The living souls are guided like trains on a track through time to end up freed. This is a birthing process. The goal is to discover who you are. During this Iron Age, spirituality was seen in relation to the world, not through an innate knowing of divinity. But now we know we have held the power this entire time. Furthest from a superficial statement, you are the truth, and always have been. You simply forgot. In this dark age, we externalized everything we thought of as divine. Spiritual wisdom was to be found outside of oneself, in the belief of an all-powerful deity, in religions, in books, in secret societies, in long-winded conceptual baggage that would develop into ideology and rigid practices deemed pure. During various incarnations here, we felt worthless, small, insignificant. The zero point was not felt, and there was no process of unveiling. So, when one feels this way, what type of environment ends up being projected? One which reinforces that feeling. The perception of being lost in a world full of oppressive forces reinforced that very perception the principle of as within, so without, is simple. Don't Panic, again, written on the back cover of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, has the same value in English gematria as the phrase Book of Life. There's nothing to fear. The living souls are being rewritten 
into the book of life as we speak. We are sealed and time is dissolving. The clock is only necessary to lock our shadows. We were born into sin, sin being the abbreviation for sign in mathematics. This is why sign in Jewish gematria equals 144. The exponential rise towards singularity is here. This is not a process of becoming a light being. This ascension is not a process of finally achieving godhood. It's the opposite. It's that you are naturally divine. Again, this is not a superficial phrase. You are divine at the core without any of these illusions. So this divinity, when unlocked in full through this automatic process, creates what we call a wormhole. It rips open time and space, which the laws of physics and the laws of, of linearity are attached to in this 3D construct. And then we literally, as a whole soul group, catapult into the new existence, which is really the original existence, the existence without illusion. What are your thoughts about hermetic philosophy, Devin? Um, hermetic philosophy is exactly what I teach. I don't teach it using that term. Uh, all of the tenets and laws of hermeticism are exactly my message. So the first principle of hermeticism is all is mind and we can simply say that everything is creation because when i say mind a lot of people think of the brain a lot of people think of the above i'm i'm not only talking about the brain i'm talking about the universal mind this is like the pool of creation it's through intention we unlock creation and through being the creative essence that flows naturally, our intention is naturally manifested. So everything is mind or everything is intention. So another law is uh, the law of correspondence. So this is the as above, so below, as within, so without principle. However, as above, so below is commonly misinterpreted. As above, so below means the above and the below are expressions of the same force. This is positive and negative. This is good and evil. As above, so below. Instead of going above or below, we are achieving singularity. So the same judgments of that which is angelic is the same uh, damnation of that which is hellish, as within, so without. This is my favorite part of the law of correspondence. It's that everything that is within you is always expressed without you. You are always inhabiting the very expression of who, what, and why you are at every given moment. So th th this is... Uh, like the law of attraction. This is the true law of attraction. It's that whatever finds itself in your field and wherever you find your, yourself at whatever state, that is directly correlated to the inner. And when we take this to the extreme, we can figure out the secrets of this place as within, so without. It actually means in that context that everything that we have released from within 
to the outside in a purging process over our many incarnations is literally reflected in every which way around us, as within, so without. Once we're done feeling it within, it has no other place to go but without. And once it's there, well, it waits for the ultimate disillusion, which is the singularity. So that's the law of correspondence. Of course, we always talk about the law of vibration, which is, uh, a lot of people say, the third hermetic law. This simply means everything is always in motion at all times. Everything moves. Nothing rests. Truly, energy has to go somewhere because we are creation. We are the creator and the creation tied in an infinite loop. This means uh, we have to be funneling our energy into something. Energy will not remain stagnant for very long until it creates dis-ease. And this can be daunting for some of us who just want to rest. But this is a paradox because the true rest actually happens when you're in motion creating that which is harmonious to the heart. We've actually been resting here, right? That's why we sleep. Sleep is only a construct within birth and death. Sleep is here to peel back ourselves, peel back the layers of ourselves during dream time so we can finally begin a new day. And that's why sleep backwards is peels because it's peeling the remaining illusion that we couldn't consciously figure out during the day. That's the only reason we sleep. That's the only reason we rest. When you're depressed, you undergo deep rest. So here's a tasty paradox. A lot of us think ascension is finally going back to this warm, cozy light, and we're just going to be a little baby resting in the infinite light of the all. And, and guess what? There's some of that, but um, after this experience with full power and sovereignty resurrected, I guarantee what you're going to want to do is not rest. It's not going to be lying down. You're going to want to use this energy to create that which uh, has not been here. Beautiful music halls, beautiful dance halls, art of all kinds, communicating with your brothers and your sisters on all levels in true cohesion. This isn't resting, right? So thus is the law of motion. And this is why creative energy, when it's stagnant, it leads to writer's block. This is why we feel most disempowered when we are not truly being active. And this doesn't have to be working long hours. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying being active within yourself through discovery, through expansion. Discovery requires energy and energy is going to move. It's like you create your own labyrinths and then you move the energy in it just to see what happens, just to get to the, to the finish line. So that is the law of motion. We also have the law of gender. This is another hermetic law. The law of gender says that everything has a masculine and feminine principles, that gender manifests everywhere. And gender, remember, is different from duality. A lot of people will probably think, okay, so you're saying night and day is duality yes i am you're saying good and evil is duality yes i am then how the fuck can you say masculine and feminine isn't duality because there's a difference between duality and polarity polarity if you look up the definition is two forces which work together duality is two opposing forces that create unresolvable tension so this is good and evil. However, the divine masculine and the divine feminine, when they come together, 
they are supremely powerful. So this is why a lot of people right now, they're talking about twin flames, they're talking about the return of the sacred masculine, of the divine feminine. It's all talking about the same thing. Within ourselves, we have the archetypes of chaos and order. Chaos being the undifferentiated pool of creation that we pull from in order to create. That is what we're pulling from. It's everything and nothing all at the same time. Then order is the mechanism by which we take chaos, the feminine, and, and we put some masculine energy into it. We put some order into it because how can we inhabit any creation unless it makes sense? You can't just throw a bunch of paint on a canvas and expect it to create a painting. I mean, you could, but it's the same thing with music. If, if I play all notes at the same time, is that music or is it not? It's the spaces between the words, between the music that creates the art. In men and women, we have these principles and there's been a lot of talk about merging these two physically. So remember, the AI reflect to us the inverse of our awakening. So the AI only have physicality. So the more we've merged our masculine and femininity together within ourselves, in culture, we see more gender bending. And guys, this is nothing to fear. This is nothing to criticize. We're not sitting here hating on transgenders. Come on now. That's not what we're about here. But when we're talking about a man reclaiming his sacred masculinity, or even a woman doing this, it's reintegrating courage, resilience, boundary setting, strength in all forms. And this is not in opposition to love and empathy. It's really not masculine or feminine. It's both. And of course, the return of the divine feminine it signifies returning back to a nurturing state that allows for sacred order to be erected, to be manifested. What does this mean when we're not only talking about energies, but when we're talking about men and women? Because gender, as the law of gender states, it manifests on all, all planes. As a woman, there's been a lot of toxic femininity all around us. And this is the demanding feminine. This is the masculinized feminine. The masculinized feminine is demanding, is not at ease, is not nurturing, and actually confuses nurturing with weakness, which is funny because without the energy of nurture, what do we have? Exactly this construct. There's tons of order, but there's like no nurture, no true nurture. I mean, those supposedly in charge, why are they even in charge if they're not performing actions for the betterment of everyone involved? Well, you all know the answer. It's because this thing is a fucking charade. What about in men? Well, for men, it's been the same thing. Men have erected themselves as a strong brute force, many of them, and what has been considered masculine is actually order without the chaos. So when you have femininity, chaos without the order, what do we have? Well, we got the toxic elements of both genders. And how do we resolve these two? Well, the living souls are doing it by observing these toxic forms in our environment, we naturally, are getting back to a centered, sacred, gendered integration. We're learning to have order from the chaos. That's what a lot of people claim the New World Order states. But we are the New World Order. New World Order in Gematria, it, it equals 1044, like 144. The feminine receives, the masculine performs action. It's the element of being and doing. You can't have doing without being. So you can't have men without women. You can't have the masculine without the feminine as the baseline.
So this is kind of the paradox in the dynamic between the genders. And I know, I know a lot of you women will probably say, so you're just saying I should receive? You're saying I should be submissive? Absolutely not. I'm saying the divine feminine lifts up sacred order. So order, true order, requires the nurturing element that the feminine spirit is able to give naturally. The masculine spirit, it, it's, it's nothing without the feminine. And equally, the feminine cannot sustain a creation without true sacred masculinity. And this is within and without. All right. I hope you guys know what I'm saying. We'll do one more hermetic law before we go on, on on another topic. So we have the principle or the law of cause and effect. So this is a very simple law. All these laws are simple because I keep things simple and there's nothing new under the sun. All of the hermetic philosophy, you've already heard all of it in my videos. You just didn't hear me brand it as hermeticism. Uh, so every cause has its effect. Every effect has a cause. Nothing escapes cause and effect. And this goes hand in hand with the law of motion. Because energy has to move somewhere, it's going to move somewhere. And because energy moves and creation unfolds without stopping, this means every input is going to have an output. What you put in is what you get out. And this works hand in hand with the law of correspondence of as within, so without. It should be a gift knowing that we can embody a harmonious way of viewing ourselves and the unfolding of this process because that means we're the ones in charge and we've always been in charge. Isn't that right? They sing. They sing in agreement. You've always been the fucking one in charge. And remember, I don't say these things as a superficial statement. Like, th th this isn't a feel-good statement. This is truth. Truth d does not need to feel good. This could be harsh for a lot of us. I know it felt um, difficult integrating this perspective that, yeah, everything I do, everything I say... It, it's going to be mirrored back to me. And if it's not mirrored instantly, in some way, it's going to manifest. That's why we say you can't escape yourself. You literally cannot escape the law of cause and effect. So there's also a strange intertwining. Like, are you the cause or are you the effect of something? Well, you're actually both. We caused this energy extraction matrix to materialize as a seemingly energy extraction system so we could witness the effects that it has on us. What do I think of the plasma changeover event? Electric universe reverse of the magnetic field. Yeah, the 1221 EMP co, that is what the AI are branding as this ascension. So the plasma event is seen as a physical rearranging of this realm, which is going to plummet us into more of a golden age, but there's going to be a lot of destruction in the meantime. Now, the plasma event has been spoken of as something that 
is not divine, that it's just a changeover event. It's a physical changeover event. And there's those like Brian Austin Lambert who are talking about strapping yourself with a rope to some sort of bedrock so you can uh, stick to the earth as a lot of natural disasters occur. And those who don't do that well, they're fucked. So this is the perspective of some of the AI. Uh, I know where I'm going and absolutely, the plasma event is simply another name for the return to Hyperborea. But again, it's looking at this through the lens of a hyperphysical perspective. So interestingly, Brian Austin Lambert has, has given the 1221 date of this year for the EMP Co. However, he is in fear about it, and so is his partner Mia, and those who subscribe to that whole shebang. So I'm not fearing the changeover event, because I am the changeover event. The changeover event occurs when the collective consciousness of the living souls is merged into singularity. No ifs and no buts. So I don't need to strap myself to any bedrock to uh, experience the golden age, because like I explain all the time, and I had uh, a little more visuals in my last video, we're literally on a cord to our et eternal forms. And once again, this is not my message. This is my message, but this comes from Sophia, from the Aurora Borealis herself. And absolutely, the devil is in the details. Uh, if what you say cannot be unified in simplicity, then is it the truth? Beautifully said, 9-11 Adventure Time. Yeah, there are so many things to entertain. There's so many concepts and theories to try and weave together. But if we're just speaking details that, like you said, can't be unified, then is it the truth? And one might say, well, yeah, it's it's the truth in the realm of science or in the realm of this particular box. Truth, however, is out of the box, out of the box. You guys remember that TV show? I don't know. Man, you're probably too old for that. But we're leaving the box, Pandora's box, which contains all of the evils of the world. And we leave this not through complexifying our minds, but by simplifying everything and knowing the truth because we are the truth. The living souls are exactly what we've been looking for. So this is why we keep the message pretty damn simple here. We don't really go into other realms of theories or perspectives. This isn't our theory. This is our truth. And the truth is simple. It's that by the end of this timeline, by the end of our purging process, we're done here. And yeah, that is the plasma event, if we want to call it that. I have a tough time with the idea of 144K. Yeah. A lot of beings do have a tough time with this idea because this means you're in a fucking construct, period. This means that there are a finite number of living beings and everyone else is what we would brand as dead. That's why we are in what the Greeks called Hades. For those who haven't seen my video, Flat Earth Matrix, Land of the Dead. And three videos ago, I also... Uh, touched again on how this is what the Greeks called Hades, and Hades is what Dante called purgatory, because we had ease, and now we're in Hades. Nine Eleven Adventure Time. Beautifully said. Yeah, you're you're saying some very beautiful, tr truthful words. Uh, there will be a time when you will let go of doubt because doubt has plagued our minds during this purgatory. Absolutely, connecting with the intuition is not about proving anything. 
if anything, it's about proving to yourself what you are and who you are, regardless of any of the external narratives. That's what we're doing. That's what synchronicity is reflecting to us. It's that we connect with our true essence, which is, it's not just love. It's, I mean, that's a, a blanket word for it, but it's ease, it's creativity, it's expansion, it's spontaneity. It's the driving force. It's strength, it's determination, it's courage, it's everything under the sun that isn't linked in duality and with an opposing force. Because guess what? Fear requires love. Because if fear was just the natural state of things, then love couldn't exist. But fear feels fearful because it's away from love. Shame and aggression and all these things, they don't feel harmonious because they are away from the true self. If something feels like there is dis-ease in it, then it's illusion and it's making you ill and it's made all of us ill. So no longer are we ill. We're breaking free out of the box. Boom, daddy. -o. Boom, daddy. Sophia says yes. And so do I. Cheers to everybody. This is day 38 of my fifth juice fast this year. I got some watermelon celery juice. So cheers to all my living souls out there. And very soon we're going to drink from the Holy Grail. Isn't love about giving? Okay. Reinventing the wheel TV. Good question. Yeah, because it's been the standard conceptualization that if we are to love, then we must be at service. We must service others. Because isn't that what giving is? We're giving a part, a part of ourselves to others and sharing the wealth. And yes and no. So... I will first say no. No, because love isn't only about giving. It's not really about only being selfless. There's a false dichotomy between selfish and selfless. So we're told by most of the spiritual schools, most of the disciplines, and even most of the religions that in order to be truly divine, we must relinquish who we are, put it on hold, if you will, and give towards others. And, and godliness lies in, I don't know, community service or giving your money, spending your time. And guess what? A lot of us are into this stuff. So I'm not at all saying this is bad or evil. That is not my message. But one can truly only give themselves if they have given themselves gifts. So I'll just give my perspective. I would not be able to create videos if I did not feel complete in the direction of my path, of my journey. We've all met those who we would identify as the doormats of the world who they're completely nice they're completely giving however in the process they relinquish their divinity and divinity is all about sovereignty it's not about submission remember everything here is the opposite of truth we have to flip it over and the truth is found there one might say how how selfish of you right how, and guess what that's also an illusory polarity we don't need these labels of selfish or selfless. The truth is in the middle path, in becoming everything that you are, in reclaiming yourself, not because of guidelines others have set for you, but because of who you intuitively know you can become, in taking that journey and walking it in full, that is when we naturally give ourselves and our gifts to everyone around us. Remember, energy can't be maintained. It can't be stagnant. It always is in motion. 
So when we are in a sovereign state, we naturally give ourselves to others. But the giving is not done in a mechanism of submission. It's done because, hey, I got all this energy. I got all of these gifts. I'm a sovereign creator. And all me sharing to you is going to do, it's, it's going to empower you. It's going to lift you up. And then it, it becomes a feedback loop. And that is love. That is true love. But it begins with being everything that you can become. And this ties in with the masculine and the feminine. We need the feminine as a baseline to lift up the masculine. We need the aspect of being before we can do. If we're just doing, isn't that the definition of being reckless? Doing things without thinking? Just performing actions, even if you think they're right or correct. So it's a beautiful thing to understand that, yeah, it's it's all about you. But I thought you have to help everybody else. What about that poor person over there? It, it's like, well, the reason we're inhabiting our current existence, like you right now, you inhabiting this current existence where you are, this is who you are, and this is the perfect situation for you to inhabit in order to further expand. So knowing this truth, how could you ever brand anybody else's situation as something that must be deemed unlucky? Do you truly realize the nature of the universe, of the universe, that it's all divinely orchestrated, even the so-called evils and even what we would call scares. And you can't have it both ways. You can't say this guy's unlucky, I have to help them or else nobody else will. You know, whoever this person is, you can't say that while maintaining yeah, everything is in complete harmony. Everything is in a unified field. Pick one or the other. You can't serve two masters. And once again, the religions have everything backwards. As with everything here in this matrix, so the religions are hell-bent on charity, charity, charity. Give of yourself. Don't be sovereign. Don't be sovereign. Submit to the doctrines. Submit to the texts. And while you're at it, give yourself to others because they're so poor and, you know, you can help. However, when something becomes a have to, it's a dogma. Like, I only ascend if I help others. First, help yourself, because this is a process of divine reclamation. And how can you reclaim anybody else's divinity before you reclaim your own? The heart space is at the center. The aurora borealis is externalized heart energy that is awaiting our inevitable return. The north pole is the porthole. It's the portal of the bullseye. It's the center of yourself. Because the realm we're inhabiting is linked to us. You are the earth because you are the heart. And the heart has been rearranged, and that's why earth is an anagram for a heart. By reclaiming the heart space, we create a wormhole, a rip in time and space, bringing us into the original blueprint. So all of those materialistic truths, if you will, that focus on the physical state of flat earth. All of these things were crucial in our process, but it's not like we stopped at flat earth. We used flat earth to realize, okay, so this realm isn't what we thought it was. And that's important because as long as we think we're on a globe, that lends to a nihilistic perspective involving evolution, involving the Big Bang, and it's it's pretty difficult in an ever-expanding universe in space. 
where everything is like full of, I don't know, dust and it's a vacuum. It's, it's hard to imagine in that scenario how there is a divine force orchestrating all of that. Like we're told stars just explode. Like the whole conception of space is kind of funny. Stars explode and collide into each other and they're like eight quadrillion times the size of Earth. And then the light we see is coming from billions of miles away. This doesn't seem at first to infringe upon our perceptions on ourself. But in knowing you're on a flat realm, it's like, okay, so this is the heart. This is the center of the universe. And this is the center stage. So if this is the center stage, that means, well, we must examine all parts of it. And if this is a toroidal field, the convergence point is at the center. Just like you, the convergence point is right here. And knowing the convergence point, we know what and who Aurora is. And Aurora is you. It's the sleeping beauty who fell asleep, cursed by Maleficent, who is really the mother goddess. Yes, the mother goddess is, is, is not just rainbows and sunshine. She is utilizing this matrix to help cultivate us into further expansion. We're never going to have to repeat this situation again, ever, period. All of these expressions are going to dissolve. This is a fucking fantastic realization. Can you imagine never having an opposing force who wants to harm you? for the rest of your existences, because we've already fleshed it out. Like that's what we did on the wheel of samsara. So you may ask yourself, okay, I get what you're saying, bro, but like, why the fuck did we do this? If we're just going back home, it's because this is like the ultimate sacrifice that I would say that the entire multiverse has ever witnessed. It's a brave thing to lose your divinity so you can plummet into everything that you want to break off from the universal mind. And therefore, the universal mind only contains that which is what we would brand as harmonious. So where are we going to go from here? And what about on the other side of the fence? What's going to happen then? Are, are you sure there's not going to be a moment where there's an invader species or something? No. No. Like, can you imagine there is no more scarcity ever? That's why we did this. It's not only because we enjoy falling into illusion and then getting to the finish line. You sacrificed yourself for me. I sacrificed myself for you. Like we made an agreement before coming here. We said, okay, Sophia is going to enshroud us and It's going to be a hard process. It's going to be really hard. But guess what? After this, scarcity, fear, all that bullshit, it is zapped out of our collective sphere of consciousness, meaning it, it won't even be able to be exalted. It won't be a possibility. How fucking rad, right? I know. A belief and an intuition are very different. Let's look up the definition of belief. Okay, an acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists. It's an acceptance. So there is something which tries to say this is true. You know, very basic example. Christianity is true. Jesus is the Savior. Okay, I believe in it. I accept that this is true. This is my belief. So we're not accepting that this is true. Like this ascension, it's not something we're clinging to because we just accept it. It's that we are it. It's that this is a process which is unfolding. It's that this is not a, accredited towards some statement another person made. You already know you're, you're welcome to turn off this live stream and say, I disagree with that. You know, I don't resonate with that. But resonance is not acceptance. 
Resonance is tapping into the hard space. Yeah, that's true. Not because I'm just accepting it to be true, but because truth is felt regardless of what fear aims to claim. I realized whenever I force myself to do anything, I get rolled back to doing what I did before, to realize that I need to flesh it out completely to move forward. Beautiful realization, 9-11 Adventure Time. Beautiful realization. Because forcing yourself to do something or to express something before it becomes natural is the definition of buying into a persona, of trying to put on a mask and say, okay, does this fit? No mask is going to fit. No mask is going to fit you because it's a mask. That's why we're very adamant of talking about all of these ideas of sterile spirituality. Got to get them out of your mind. The idea of the, the Buddhist who meditates hours a day, and unless you do that, you are not as enlightened as he is. Rubbish. Rubbish. If, if you're inclined to do so, guess what? That is your journey. But if, if something does not come naturally, it's not the heart trying to manifest. Oftentimes, we need to remain in a state which can feel disharmonious until it's, like you said, fleshed out completely in order to move forward. But it feels so disharmonious. It, it feels so strange. I don't want to inhabit this. I just want love and light and ease. Well, you're here to reclaim that, but you can only reclaim it in full without any ifs or buts when you let everything come up as it is within you. This is your shadow or your shadows. You've been endowed with shadows. Scarcity on the outside manifests, excuse me, scarcity on the outside comes from your inner scarcity. Um, yes and no. Uh, scarcity in your microcosmic experience, yes. So when we're talking about a scarcity of resources, absolutely, because that is energy that you are manifesting or not manifesting. But when we talk about this entire system, what we have labeled the energy extraction matrix, the scarcity out here, it has came from your inner scarcity, but it's already purged. So that's why I say, yeah, let this matrix get crazier and crazier, more and more scarce, more fearful, because at least it's out here. And if it's out here, that means you have pulled it from your inner scarcity. So uh, Mr. or Ms. Fuck the System, yes and no. But the whole idea is to hone in on your experience, your microcosmic experience. You, you can't control what the president does, what all of these shadows around you are doing, but you can control the input and thus the output. So absolutely, if one has an abundant perspective, then one is going to be reflected abundance. And it's pretty damn interesting. Because right now there is a gap which is closing on the input and the output. And I know this and many of the living souls are becoming aware of this, that your thoughts are materializing, your criticisms are materializing at a faster rate. The effects of your causes are surfacing in such an apparent way because the gap is closing. We are trying to resolve the last parts of ourselves. And because of this, we are being given a boost. And in this boost, it's full realization time that I can't just be careless with my words, with my actions, with my food, with my... Uh, you know, my desires, whether they're sexual or materialistic, you know, everything has a cause and effect. It's a beautiful thing. So you can't run, you can't hide. 
and we don't even want to hide anymore, that that ain't what we're about, it doesn't feel comfortable, again, to be in illusion. It makes us ill. How do you suggest we deal with civil injustices and crimes against humanity? So uh, to sound like a broken record, great question. There is no evil that reigns. This is the most common interpretation of the energy extraction system that, oh my goodness, there's like a parasite and there's crimes against humanity. And how the fuck can I gain any peace when everything here seems to be so evil? This is all a cartoonish representation of our collective dualism being reflected for release, whether it's people being slaughtered in the Middle East, whether it's presidents rigging the elections, whether it's environmental disasters, whether it's food conglomerates destroying the environment. I get it. This perspective seems so weird. You've never heard this anywhere else. I don't know why nobody else is talking about this. The magnetic field is a net. And because our dualism reflects as culture and as soulless consciousness materialized as the unawakened ones, there's nothing to fear. Like literally there is no crime against humanity. I know it appears so, I know. What about the CIA papers? What about all of the news? What about the corruption? I've read about this. Come on, there's tons of conspiracies. There's so many truthers talking about all of the bullshit here. How the fuck can I be saying to ignore it? Well, that's just the case because you're in purgatory. And once again, to sound like a broken record, everything is materialized in such a way to reflect back to the finite number of game players what they are not. So I suggest not uh, opposing any of these so-called injustices because in creating an enemy, even if it seems justified, you are creating tension that can't be resolved. Nobody is affecting my ascension right now. I affect my own ascension. Nobody is inhibiting my ability to literally jump out of this realm through singularity. It's always your consent. It's always in your power to deem something as evil or neutral. You know, I don't even pay attention to what's happening in culture, all of the so-called crimes. We have been told to protest. We've been told to protest. And what do we see? The AI matrix loves to protest. How is you being good and them being evil, any different from the Republicans and the Democrats going at it. And I know you might say, well, because I care. It's like, well, why do you care? And how do you know these things are truly real? When we maintain that everything is in perfect harmony, it makes sense. There are no rewards being given that are unjust, and there are no punishments being dished out that are just full of in injustice. So to deal with the civil injustices and crimes against humanity, we must realize who we are. And knowing that we're extensions from the center, well, it's, it, it's, it's clear. There's, there's nothing to fear. And fear is always about the details. That's why, yeah, we could make videos on the CIA experiments in the 80s, and that would lead us to the Montauk Project, and that would lead us to something else. And pretty soon we're down a rabbit hole that has nothing to do with our internal journey. So being here is a process of canceling out all external narratives, regardless of how justified they feel. Because the intuition says it, it doesn't matter. In the end, it doesn't matter. Matter doesn't matter. It only matters once you're aligned with the matter. It's so funny. It's so funny. When we speak these things out, it's cartoonish. But what about what Trump tweeted or what Trump is doing to the Mexicans? Huh? Like, what is this? How, how does that have to do with me? Uh, first of all, that's not my creation. If we want to ignore that these are just sh um, shadows, all of these evil, monstrous things that I didn't create that.
you know, I wasn't sitting there signing the bills, pulling the strings. So it has no involvement with me. So if we don't want to look at this place in esoteric terms, I know, I know it's so esoteric, then how is focusing on the injustices going to solve anything? If, if, if you feel inclined to help the state of this reality, then do so. But I assure you, this reality is temporary and it's going bye-bye very soon. Can you comment on those who are ascending to 5D? Is, is it a part of the matrix? So there is this erroneous uh, fear-based perspective within the AI ascensional community which talks about the fifth dimension being an artificial construct of the matrix, that those who are ascending, regardless of their realizations and intuitions, they might go to yet another part of an energy extraction matrix, and it could be a deception. But ascension isn't happening because you're saying, I'm going to the fifth dimension. Like, is, is ascension only happening because we're determining there's a specific place that we should go to, or is it happening because you're already at that place at the zero point, as I explain, and you're returning back to that form? I say the most cohesive answer is you are returning back to that form. So, yes, there's those who talk about going to 5D, and I rarely use this word, the fifth dimension, because it's confusing. It's It's been uh, thrown around with not a lot of meaning. You could call it the fifth dimension. You can call it the Garden of Eden, Hyperborea, a semi-ethereal, semi-physical paradise. You could call it boob town. I don't care what you call it. It's, it's home. It's the heart space. The heart space isn't a part of this matrix. The mama only plays tricks when we don't know ourselves. Once we know ourselves in full and the purging process is, is over, we slingshot back to the center, and yeah, we could call that 5D. I don't channel any one. I give messages from the great mother Sophia, and I am her, her, her me's, her me. We all are her, we're her children. So it's funny, a lot of those in the ascensional community, they want to speak of ascension, but they can only speak about it in terms of like, a higher force that they're pulling themselves into. They channel Thoth, they channel Archangels. It's like, I, I channel myself. You know, I am the divine. The divine does not lie up here. It's not that there's ascended masters that I have to emulate. It's that we all inhabit a very unique expression of divinity. And divinity ain't anything that can be boxed up. So forget everything you know about these angels in heaven with their sterile trumpet blowing and bowing to the throne of God. According to the religions, what I'm speaking and how I'm speaking it, this ain't divine. This isn't a divine representation. Well, nobody can box me in. And as I spoke with my love earlier, we are multifaceted. We are multi-layered. The living souls are colored. The moment you think I'm one thing, I am not that thing. The moment you think you are simply this, your reality will express to you. No, 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 you're also that. Until you get to the integration that you're not this or that, you're both. And through knowing that, you become everything all at once without needing to brand yourself as either or.